Today I learned. Amidst the roar of flak in World War II, a story of heroism emerged from the skies over Nazi Germany. It wasn't a grand aerial battle, but a quiet whisper of defiance tucked in the steel of enemy shells. On July 30, 1943, a B-17 bomber nicknamed Tondaleo miraculously returned home to its base in England, bearing 11 gaping wounds from explosive shells, meant to turn the aircraft into a fiery inferno. Yet against all odds, none of the shells exploded. As teams worked to disarm the unexploded ammunition, they discovered the shells weren't duds. They were sabotaged, their explosives replaced with emptiness. It was a silent act of rebellion from within the very heart of the German war machine. One shell bore a hidden message written in Czech. This is all we can do for you now. Who was this Czech hero? A factory worker forced to serve the enemy? A prisoner risking their life for a flicker of hope? Their identity remains lost, yet, their act of defiance echoes across history. Did you know? The Vosges Mountains, 1944. A Texan battalion finds itself surrounded by German forces. Trapped and dwindling, they became known as the Lost Battalion. Their fate, however, wouldn't be sealed in that valley. It would be linked to the bravery and sacrifice of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, composed of Japanese Americans known as Nisei. The 442nd, despite prejudice and segregation, had earned a reputation as fierce fighters. When the call came to rescue the beleaguered Texans, they answered without hesitation. For five days, amidst the icy rain and relentless gunfire, they battled through the German lines, sacrificing over 800 men to save 211 of the lost battalion. The rescue showcased the courage of the 442nd, who fought not just for victory but for the lives of strangers bound to them in combat. Years later, in 1962, Texas recognized the extraordinary heroism of the 442nd by bestowing upon them the title of Honorary Texans. Did you know? A ship cloaked in darkness, with silent guns, yet bristling with a hidden fury. That's HMS Cambatown, a British destroyer transformed into a Trojan horse of steel and explosives. Its target, the St. Nazaire Dry Dock, a behemoth Atlantic port capable of servicing Nazi Germany's most fearsome warships. On March 28, 1942, under the cloak of night, 611 British commandos aboard Cambatown and a fleet of smaller craft embarked on a daring mission, Operation Chariot. Their objective, crippled the St. Nazaire Dock, a vital artery for the Nazi Kriegsmarine. The Cambatown, disguised as a German vessel, rammed into the dock's gates, brimming with delayed explosives. Commandos swarmed ashore, unleashing chaos and destruction into the night. But heavily guarded St. Nazaire refused to fall easily. Enemy fire decimated the landing craft, leaving the commandos stranded. Yet, they fought on, battling through streets and warehouses. By dawn, Cambatown's hidden payload erupted, putting the St. Nazaire dry dock out of commission for the rest of the war. Though many commandos paid the ultimate price, their sacrifice dealt a crippling blow to the Nazi war machine. Did you know? World War II saw countless stories of heroism, but the mission of B-17, Old 666 stands out as an almost unbelievable feat. Facing impossible odds against a swarm of 50 Japanese Zeros, the crew of 10 men fought the enemy fighters back for almost an hour. Pilot Captain Jay Zemer Jr. led his crew on a solo mapping mission over hostile territory. Despite knowing they would be a target, they ventured deep into enemy airspace. Then, they encountered a sea of Zeros. Bullets riddled the B-17, mortally wounding bombardier Joseph Sarnowski and injuring several others. Zemer himself suffered horrific injuries to his legs and controls. In a 40-minute battle, they fought off wave after wave of attackers. Low on ammunition and fuel, the Zeros finally broke off, and the battered B-17 was able to limp home. The bravery of the old 666 crew was duly recognized. Zemer and Sarnowski were awarded the Medal of Honor, and the other crew members received the Distinguished Service Cross. This mission cemented their place as the most decorated aircrew in US history. Did you know? France, 1944. Allied tanks pushing through Normandy's thick hedgerows are exposing their vulnerable underbellies to enemy fire. This was the dangerous reality Sergeant Curtis Grubb Coulin faced as his Sherman started the liberation of France. But Coulin, fueled by ingenuity and a touch of inspiration, wouldn't let his tank become a sitting duck. Coulin, a tanker with the 102nd Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron, wasn't one to shy away from a challenge. Inspired by a fellow soldier's suggestion, he transformed scrap steel from a German roadblock into a four-pronged plow. This ingenious contraption, attached to the front of his tank, easily tore through the hedgerows without stalling or exposing its vulnerable belly. Kulin's invention, christened the Kulin Hedgerow Cutter, or Rhino Horn, was a tactical breakthrough. Soon, 60% of the First Army's tanks sported these tusks, carving paths through Normandy's bocage and turning the tide of the battle. Kulin's story is a reminder that even in the chaos of war, brilliant ideas can emerge from the most unexpected places, changing the course of history and saving countless lives. Did you know? In Nazi-occupied Holland, a fiery spirit burned bright, Hanni Shaft, the girl with the red hair. 
A master of sabotage and stealth, she carried out numerous missions against Nazi targets. Her resistance began subtly, smuggling identity cards for persecuted Jews. But soon, a hunger for more led her to the Rod van Verzet, the Council of Resistance. Armed and trained, she became an assassin. Hani's targets varied, German soldiers, Dutch collaborators, high-ranking officials in the Nazi regime. But amidst the fight, a flicker of humanity shone. When tasked with kidnapping the children of a Nazi official, Hani refused, unwilling to echo the same cruelty as her oppressors. Eventually, fate caught up with Hani. Captured and identified, she stood defiant. On an April morning, just weeks before the liberation of her homeland, Hani was put to death. The first bullet grazed her. But even then, she met her end with a defiant whisper, Ich shoot better, I shoot better. Hani Shaft's story is a reminder that even in the darkest times, courage and compassion can flicker into a resistance. Did you know? During World War II, as the Nazis ruthlessly hunted down Jewish populations across Europe, Sultan Muhammad V of Morocco emerged as a beacon of humanity and courage. It is reported that Muhammad V resisted Vichy French officials' efforts to enforce anti-Jewish legislation in Morocco and deport the country's 250,000 Jews to Nazi concentration camps in Europe. His refusal to comply was rooted not only in humanitarian instincts but also in his claim of sovereignty over all his subjects, including the Jews. Despite his objections, some Nazi race measures were implemented in Morocco, and he signed two decrees, under Vichy instructions, that restricted certain schools and positions. While the extent of his anti-Nazi role is a subject of debate, Moroccan Jews hold Sultan Mohammed V in high esteem for safeguarding their community from the Nazi and Vichy French government. They credit him with protecting them during the Holocaust, and Jewish organizations have honored him for his actions. Did you know? Before dazzling audiences as Tony Bennett, 18-year-old Anthony Benedetto saw action on the global stage of World War II. Drafted in 1944, he joined the 63rd Infantry Division and was thrust into the brutal closing months of the German Front, which he would later describe as, a front row seat in hell. Surviving relentless firefights and narrowly escaping death several times, Bennett saw war's gruesome reality. He also participated in liberating a subcamp of Dachau, forever scarring him with sights, no human being should ever see. At a time when the U.S. Army was still segregated by race, Bennett was also demoted for dining with a black friend from high school and reassigned to mortuary duties. Throughout it all, music remained a lifeline. Bennett sang with the 314th Army Special Services Band and alongside fellow soldiers who would also have post-war careers. War transformed Bennett. Witnessing its devastation made him a pacifist, forever shaping his outlook in music. Did you know? The hush of a theater, a spotlight illuminating a lone figure with a painted white face and black beret. Marcel Marceau's world was a realm of silent stories and gestures. But as shadows of World War II fell over Europe, this master of silent art found himself playing a different role, a secret savior of Jewish children. Born to a Jewish family in France, Marceau was forced into hiding after the German invasion. He was recruited into the French resistance, where he used his skills to help rescue numerous children from the race laws and concentration camps. Mimed butterflies fluttered above anxious brows, playful animals chased away tears, and silent games sparked laughter in the face of danger. At least 70 children, protected by Marceau's silent shield, escaped across the border into neutral Switzerland. Following the liberation of Paris, Marceau joined the French army. Because of his fluency in English, French, and German, he worked as a liaison officer with General George Patton's Third Army. Did you know? Amidst the tanks rolling ashore on D-Day was a Canadian Sherman named, Bomb. This wasn't just any tank, Bomb was a testament to resilience, as one of the two Canadian tanks to fight continuously from D-Day to the end of World War II. Built in Flint, Michigan, Bomb landed at Juneau Beach on June 6, 1944, with the Sherbrooke Fusilier Regiment. For 11 grueling months, Bomb served as a loyal companion to its crew, participating in every major operation of the regiment, from Caen to Falaise, and seeing some of the fiercest fighting of the war. Despite facing relentless enemy fire, Bomb persevered. It took direct hits from shells, its tracks and engines were replaced twice, and even survived an infantry anti-tank rocket attack. Yet, through it all, Bomb never missed a day of action. By the time VE Day arrived, Bomb had fired over 6,000 rounds, tallying five confirmed enemy tank kills. Today, Bomb rests peacefully at the William Street Armory in Sherbrooke, Quebec, a reminder of unwavering resilience. Did you know?